Hey everyone, someone here from winstrength.com bringing you a daily training vlog of day two from week six from the Power Building 2 template by Barbell Medicine. Uh, this will be the first week where we start ramping down volume and increasing intensities. So I'm going to be looking at competition style bench press, working up to a single at RPE 8, followed by a single set of five. Um, then we're going to be moving on to some two count pause squats. Uh, I'll be doing it with the SS yoke bar and finally wrapping up with some volume work for a beltless press. Um, so what you notice is because we're doing singles, I'm actually going to be doing higher reps for the lower weight. So start off with an empty bar, did two sets of 20 reps uh, to get the blood flowing. And then what I'll be doing is uh, five, five reps for the first three, three, first three warm up sets and dial down the volume as it increases the weight. So we're looking at 95 pounds for five, then 135 for five, and then probably 185 for three, and then 225 for single, and then we'll work our way up to get some single weights up until our target weight for today. Okay, so for those that are wondering, I would like to go through a little bit of how I, uh, how I like to set up for the bench press. Uh, I found now with the very shoulder issues I've had over the years, I do like to use a more powerlifting style where there's an arch in the back and then you are driving a little more with the legs and the triceps. Um, so I'll play some clips now of the setup. What I like to first start off with is to uh, use the bar to get my grip width, I, or, or I'll use the actual rack to push my shoulder blades into each other. Uh, that way I can really get a really nice tight squeeze because you really want to pinch those shoulder blades in as well as uh, somewhat pull them down towards your butt. So there's two things there with the shoulders and then I do like to set up with my ring finger on the on the lifting mark there for the rings. Um, and then what I do is personally, I like to I like to get a little bit of an arch, uh, but I won't bring my feet all the way back. What I do is actually have them uh, at a slightly greater than 90 degree angle. Um, this allows me to use my legs to drive my traps into the bar, sorry, into the pad, which is what I'm trying to focus on with the leg drive. Um, it's actually, if I have my feet underneath me uh, curled too much, I don't, my, my body can't connect the leg drive with the bench press. Whereas um, when it's further out, I can actually drive up and I'm imagining pushing my head off of the off the bench pad as it were. So just got done with 285 for a single. Felt really solid, really uh, stoked with that result. Uh, probably RPE 7, so we're gonna go one more to hit that final rep at RPE 8. So that's a great thing with RPE training. Um, if today felt bad, I would call it at 285, but since we're doing good, let's bump it up 10 pounds, let's see how we go. Um, if if I hit 295 and it felt amazing, then then you can bump it up to 295. So that's, that's one of the benefits of RPE style training where you can base it on the day based on how you're feeling, which I mean is subjective, yes, and my, some people might argue against that, but it still adds as like an auto regulation factor. And if you start using RPE training earlier rather than later, you're going to start to read your body and really understand what a true RPE 7, 8, 9, 10 is. So just wrapped up bench press for this session. Uh, pretty happy with the results. Hit 295 for single at RPE 8. Uh, it's great. I think it's maybe pushing RPE 8.5 if I'm really honest with myself. Um, so I think that's great. No real shoulder discomfort, a little bit here and there. Um, I think a couple of things I can work on with the technique, uh, engage a leg, when it starts getting heavier, a lot of that technique kind of just, <laughs> a lot of the technique just goes out of my brain. So that's why I think it's really important to, to hone in on the technique during the warm up because once a weight gets heavy, I, I think, well, I personally have a tendency to kind of uh, forget or just not think about technique and it kind of just comes down to uh, muscle memory and instinct at that point. So I think that's that's why it's really important to have uh, good reps and good technique, obviously throughout the years and years of training, but more so for the warm ups, and that's why I kind of always like to have uh, a, a technique to focus on during the warm ups. That way, it's the last thing in my like conscious brain that I'm thinking about once the weight starts to get heavy and I start to lose uh, finer motor pattern thinking skills. So now we're going to move on to some pause squats. I'm going to use the SS Shirk bar. I'm really a big fan of this bar. Uh, I think it helps a lot with taking off any stress from the shoulders. Uh, it changes the angles a little bit. I'm not the biggest fan of front squats, mainly because I'm not good at them. So <laughs> take that for what it is, but I think the SSB is a good trade-off if uh, you want the weight on your back rather than the front. 
because uh, it still taxes your core and your ability to stay upright. Uh, we will be doing some high rep by high reps. Uh, I do mean in the eight rep range, so I consider that high reps. Uh, they will be two count pauses. Uh, with the with the SSB, I am using a heeled squat shoe. I do prefer the heeled squat shoe when I am using the SSB, just because of the angles and the body movement. That's just personally for me. Uh, your mileage might vary. Uh, it probably will vary depending on how your body structure is lining up with the SSB and whatever other factors you might have there. So working through these pause squats with the SS yoke bar, uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, I like to use the the thousand double count technique, so I'll go. I'll go squat down, then thousand one, thousand one, up, thousand two, thousand two, up, thousand three, thousand three, up. Uh, I used to put the iPad in front of me to keep track with a stopwatch. Sometimes I'm a bit lazy and don't want to do that, so this is my fail safe method of getting a proper two count. Ideally, put the iPad out there, put the iPhone out there. That's in front of you, so when you go down, you can see the seconds tick away uh, because the seconds have a tendency to last a lot longer than you think they do. So we're halfway through the pause squats. Uh, one thing to keep in mind uh, for pause squats, but really any pause movement in general, is when you get to the bottom of the lift, you don't want to engage any stretch reflex. So what that looks like is when you get to the bottom of the lift, um, when you pause, after the pause, you'll dip down a little bit, then initiate the squat up, or the, the bench press, the pause, whatever it might be because what you're doing is you're kind of negating the benefits of the pause by bouncing down to come back up because you re-engage that stretch reflex by dipping and dipping and then uh, pressing or pushing up. Ideally, you squat down and you hold it like a statue and then you fire up almost like a deadlift where you don't you, you the point of the pause is to disengage the stretch reflex that any muscle might have in the movement what it does is it allows you to train the the movement or the muscle with lighter weights because you're not able to engage the stretch reflex which helps um push out more weight kind of like when you go for a jump you're going to want to bend down before you jump up you don't just jump up as we were saying with like that's why the squat and the bench press are great because you have that rebound that stretch reflex and if you train that, that reflex well you can get the timing down so where you're actually bouncing up i mean it, for lack of a better term you're bouncing up and getting a little bit more uh muscle engaged into the lift uh, dive bombing is totally different. I wouldn't recommend it. Don't do it. Uh, bouncing the barbell off your chest is again different. Don't do it. <laughs> but what you're trying to do is it's like a rubber band. You stretch it back and then you spring it forward or like a spring you can press it down and then you pop it out. And the difference being that unlike a rubber band or spring, your body disengages the tension of the stretch reflex when you're at the bottom lift and you hold it for a couple of seconds. Um, that's why like if you're sitting down and try and set up. Sometimes you'll like rock back to rock forward. You'll get that momentum into the lift into just simply standing up. And that's where that stretch reflex really aids in uh, exertion and muscle, muscle force production. All right, so we just wrapped up day two of week six. Um, today's primary lift was a bench press. Felt pretty good with that. Uh, just uh, got done with the beltless strict pressing. Definitely one of my weaker points in my entire training uh, results, I would say, is the overhead press for me. Um, it's something I'm constantly trying to work on. It's it's one of my struggles with recently is to bring the press up in order to match my other lifts. Uh, right now it's maximum 205 with a belted overhead press. Uh, we just did some reps with 115, 115 then 105 for more volume. I think it's getting better, obviously like any movement, if you want to get better at overhead pressing, simple answer is to overhead press more. So given the program requirements, it's going to be lagging because we're only pressing overhead pressing like once or twice a week compared to the other movements where we're doing somewhere from two, anywhere from two to four sessions per week. Uh, that includes the accessory lifts and whatnot. So overall, the session went great. Um, I'm really enjoying heading back to lower reps with higher weights. We'll see how the weeks progress to see just how much my one rep maxes increase in the squat bench 
deadlift, overhead press, uh, because they are the four main movements for this program that they're centered around, uh, being a power building style template with power lifting, squat bench dead, and we just like the overhead press because it's a great movement that engages a lot of muscles. Okay, so check out the blog, windstrength.com. That's where I put uh, a weekly training update. Uh, it's a little bit more frequent than the videos are coming out, so I'll link to those in the video description below. Uh, highly recommend reading those. I put some different information out there. Uh, week five, I threw up a little, some little screenshots of the graphs that come with the template. Uh, that way you can kind of assess where your estimated one rep max is going. Uh, it's just one of the features of this of the template that you get, which I think is really cool because it adds an analytical side to the to the lifting, you engage your performance. It gives you solid metrics to track. Uh, they also take into account your session RPE, so we're building some more data points for you in the future. Uh, you couple this with a good training log, um, and even a sleep log, a nutrition log, if you want to go that far into it. Uh, then you get a really good indication of what of cause and effect. How does your sleep, how does your diet affect your training, and vice versa. So I think it's a really great uh, product they've released out and I highly recommend it. I'll leave links for Barber Medicine below as well. Uh, comment if you're enjoying this new daily daily series that I'm releasing out where I talk in between sets. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if I haven't already said so. Uh, new videos whenever I get around to it. Thanks for watching if you've tuned in so far. It's been Selling from Wind Strength and always remember a better life through strength.